Let's take a look at three dividend stocks that pay you a monthly dividend. Basically, you get paid monthly as far as that income from a dividend. Most stocks, as you know, pay quarterly or every, of course, every three months. But these actually pay you monthly, which is good because then you can reinvest that money or use it to buy stuff, you know, travel, buy a car, whatever you want to do. But it's monthly income. And these are high paying dividend stocks. But each one of these, I want to caution you, there's an element of risk versus reward. Right? There is some risk things in these three ones of uh, these three stocks that might be interesting to you, or they might not be, but they have the potential for good high-end rewards with it as well, too. Not only pay you a monthly dividend, but maybe some stock price appreciation along the way. So these are three intriguing stocks in three different industries that we're gonna look at that'll pay you monthly dividends. Coming up on investing education with me, Mr. B. All right, the first one we're gonna look at is EPR Properties. They're a real estate investment uh, trust uh, or a REIT. REITs can tend to pay real high dividends, by the way, and you'll see that when we look closer at EPR. And they're an experiential dividend producer. Like, well, what, is, what does that mean? Their portfolio is experiential, experiential properties. So they have movie theaters, uh, eat and play, you know, restaurant-y type things, attractions like, like um, uh, aquariums and stuff, and skiing facilities, all that. Now they don't make, like they're not EMC, they're not the theater, they actually are the property owner who owns the property that EMC rents from, for example, and pays their leases to. So they're a property management company, is what EPR is. And so EPR, if we look at some of the things to consider from that risk and reward, you know, EPR pays a nice high dividend, uh, which I'll show you. There are this, this REIT for this experiential, it's a little bit different. It certainly is a pay a play around that pandemic reopening, right? It's a pandemic reopening stock. And it has a heavy investment in theaters of all things too. Uh, so things like meme stocks like AMC Theater, which raised a lot, of mo a lot of money with their stock price going up, you know, they're hopefully able to pay uh, you know, EPR with their bills and all that. So, uh, but theaters, and by investing a lot in theaters, and you can see on the image on the right here uh, that uh, this is their portfolio, that 95% is experiential, they do 5% education, which is like private schools and early childhood education. But 45% of the properties they own are in theaters. So you're really looking at investing in theater property management is a big part of this with a little bit of diversification. So with, with theaters, you know, they still have challenges even post pandemic with like streaming services and all that. And are people going to go out to the theater? So that's the thing to consider. But let's look at EPR as far as an individual stock and talk about them real quick. Okay, I'm over at uh, Yahoo Finance Simply and we're going to look up uh, EPR here and see what they look like. Uh, EPR properties. The, and as you can see here, they're having a little bit of a down day, uh, but they, um, uh, they pay out with a real nice dividend, right? That's the first thing we're looking at is their dividend, right? So if you see here, they're paying at a 6.13% yield. So a nice dividend that's paid out monthly. Now, when you look at these dividend yield numbers, by the way, it's 6%, that's over the course of a year. So over the course of the year, if you were to buy now, you know, looking at that ratio of dividend yield, you can kind of compare that to, let's say, a savings account that's earning like 1% or maybe even less. You know, you can get 6% in just the dividend part and hopefully the price will go up too. But that's a yearly number, even though it's going to pay out the dividends on a monthly basis. So that's a real nice high dividend yield. All right, so let's take a look at how they're doing real quickly and see if they can keep you know doing that pay, paying that dividend. We're just going to look at a couple of things real quick. One thing that was interesting with them is their price to book. You know, it's a low price to book. Um, Usually that number for value investors want to be below 3.0. Certainly anything below 1.0 is a real attractive from looking at something that might be the price of the stock has been pushed down in comparison to its assets. You know, that's the price to book ratio and you can see it's been down even further. But 1.50 shows it's not an overvalued stock. It's not a high value growth stock. It's, if anything, it's more undervalued. And they've done well over the last year. They're up 20% or versus up over the last year, not necessarily year to date, but over the last year, the broader S&P up 16.5. Right, so th so they're doing that way. One thing I like to look at too is their is company's current ratios. Can they pay that monthly dividend and keep paying it? You know, that, and you want that current ratio, which is looking at current assets versus current liabilities. Current assets, things like you know, like cash, you know, which and uh, accounts receivable coming in, things that are going to you know happen within a year, uh, versus current liabilities like accounts payable. We're going to pay our bills. You want that number to be above 1.0 is what you're looking for, and 3.87 is really, really, really good. So that's good. That means they're going to keep paying that dividend, I hope, you know, and that paying that, that 6.1% yield. Though an interesting thing, their payout ratio at 150%, we like to see that around 80 or 70% or even less. That's a high dividend 
that's a high payout ratio. So I would do more diligence, like any stock, I would do more due diligence, but it's an interesting thing where they have a high payout ratio versus, you know, a very good high current ratio, you know, without just skipping through some stuff that I might cover in my dividend investing class fast. So that's, that's kind of an interesting dichotomy, you know, to look at between those two numbers. But, you know, uh, th that's still an interesting thing with that current ratio that they can keep paying that high dividend on a monthly basis is the idea behind them. Another interesting stock that pays a monthly dividend is Pembina. I always pronounce their wrong name wrong, Pembina or Pembina, I believe it's Pembina. So don't hold me, <laughs> if you're from Canada, don't hold that against me, okay? Because they're a Canadian stock, primarily they were in the um, Western uh, part of Canada. And they're, they, yes, they are a pipeline company. So no matter what they say about, you know, community engagement, environmental stewardship, and safe, reliable operations, you know, there's a lot of folks that just don't want to invest in energy, uh, you know, traditional energy stocks or pipeline stocks, and that's okay. But let's talk a little about Pamina as our second one, then we'll have a third one that might be more interesting to you if you want to stay away from, let's say, oil and gas type stocks. But Pamina is a, is a pipeline, you know, coming. So they, you know, when stock, when, when oil prices rise, gas prices rise, that actually helps them because they help move all that through their pipelines, you know, out of Canada and spread that, that energy uh, through. So when you're looking at Pembada, you want to consider that they pay a high monthly dividend. That's your reward part. And they're doing share repurchasing, which I really like. That means they're using their own money to buy their stock back. That helps keep stock prices either level or increasing. Share repurchasing for investors is typically always a good thing. But the big question you want to ask from the risk standpoint is will energy prices continue to rise, right? That's a big concern because it's so, it can be very dependent on that rising energy prices. So something to consider. So let's look a little closer at Pembina as far as how much of a dividend they're paying and they're paying that monthly dividend. Okay, let's look a little more detail at Pembina, which their ticker is PBA. If you're from the United States, a Professional Bowlers Association. It's not them, they're a pipeline company, Pembina Pipeline Corporation. And uh, you can see they're having a good day on the day of this filming. And they also pay a nice high yield, right? 5.35 is a really good dividend yield. So that's very attractive. Again, that's over a year, but they'll pay out on a monthly basis. So that's pretty good. Um, good solid earnings per share and all that too, so that's nice. Uh, let's look under statistics. There's a couple numbers real quick. You want to do your own due diligence. We saw that with the EPR, they had a very low price to book. They actually is a good price to book here for Pebina too. Even though their stock is, you know, has done very well, you know, their stock price has done very well, as you'll see here in a moment, that, that's still a very attractive price to book from a valuation standpoint. And they're up 29.5% over the last year at least the time of this filming versus 16.58 for the broader market. And they are a Canadian company, so but they trade in the New York Stock Exchange and they trade under a different symbol. I'm not sure what it is exactly. I think it's PBK under the TSX or the uh, uh, under the Canadian you know, Stock Exchange. So, so they've had great recent results, up 29% over the last year. Terrific. A lot of numbers you can look at. Um, we remember with EPR, we like that they had that nice high current ratio. It was above 1.0. These guys are below 0.52, so that's a little concerning. We'd like to see that number above 1.0. So you'd want to see that. And then what's their payout ratio? 126%. Again, they're an MLP, uh, just like a REIT, uh, MLP Manufacturer um, um, Limited Partnership. It's kind of what MLPs are to gas pipelines, what REITs are to commercial real estate or residential real estate, similar type things, the trade on exchange, pay you high dividends. But we want that payout ratio to be at least below 100%, maybe below 90 or 80. They can cover this by operations for a while. They can cover it by the 43 million in cash they have on hand. They could take on more debt. And they got a lot of debt, total debt, 11.96 billion. You know, though they run, you know, good cash flow, 2.6 billion and one point leverage cash flow. So that's okay. But, you know, these numbers are a little concerning that you'd want to look at. So their stock price is up. And uh, they still can be a value from their price to book, but I'd be a little worried about that. The last thing they want to do is cut their dividend. But right now, if you feel they're not going to cut their dividend, particularly if you think you know that oil and gas and those type of prices are going to continue to rise, you can lock in a nice 5.35% dividend yield, paying out over a year, but it's going to pay you on a monthly basis. The third and last one we're going to look at is LTC REIT, which is another real estate investment trust. But instead of like experiential, you know, investing, uh, they're looking at senior housing, right? So they do assisted living and skilled nursing facilities, right? Primarily, uh, well, exclusively in my understanding, in the United States in the north and part of the United States. In the north, you know, in the west, northwest, uh, not true northwest, but in the north 
and certainly in the Northeast. You can see the map here where they have operations with some outliers like Arkansas, for example. So, but they, they have assisted living and nursing home facilities. And they, again, look at risk reward. They pay a high dividend, but the, can they keep paying it? There's a lot of pressure around nursing home facilities to be able to you know, pay those kind of things because of the pandemic and lawsuits and all sorts of things. Now, they did maintain their dividend through the pandemic, which is a lot of people didn't. So that's a, that is a credit to them. But you, when you look at somebody like uh, like um, LTC, you got you got to really consider those macro events too, and what might be happening. If certainly from a pandemic uh, standpoint, will it get worse or will it get better? So let's take a look at um, let's take a look at LTC as far as a, a real estate investment trust and whether you might want to invest in it. The last one we'll look at here is LTC. So let's put in LTC properties, also a real estate investment trust. As you know, they do the senior the senior housing. And they're paying out over a 6% dividend yield, right? So these are nice high dividend yield paying um, uh, stocks versus let's say around 2%, 3% dividends you might find from a broader S&P 500 ETF index or maybe like a Procter & Gamble or Johnson Johnson, somebody like that. So nice high dividends paid out on a monthly basis. Let's look at a couple of their numbers real quick. Again, look even deeper, at more numbers than this, but you know, again, another price to, you know, good price to book ratio below 3.0. Again, it's, it's, there's that risk aspect of you know, how are uh, assisted living and nursing facilities going to do. Uh, but it's not like it's a, it's, you know, at, a, at a five, six, seven, or eight. It's not a high growth tech stock. So it's a good price from a value standpoint. Now, of the three we looked at, they're down 7.33% over the last year, right? So um, versus the market being up. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more of a value play on a stock that's been maybe beaten down a little bit, you know, that might be an interesting thing to look at with um, you know, with these guys, with LTC properties. Now, if we go down and we look at um, some of those numbers we were comparing, current ratio, you remember where uh, PBA struggled with that uh, and EPR was good? These guys are real good too, 2.63. That's a nice current current ratio in there, all right? And um, uh, so that's that's good to see. And the thing that, and their, but their payout ratio, like a lot of REITs and MLPs have high payout ratios, but 161%, that's still pretty high. Just like that dividend yield is as high as 6.05%. You know, there's a concept of co called chasing di chasing yield. Uh, I almost should do a video just on chasing yield, where a lot of folks will look at a high dividend yield and say, oh, I can lock in at 6% and get paid monthly dividends, which is true to an extent. But remember, companies can always cut their dividends. And if they have a hard time, you know, paying their dividends out of their pay out of their net income, which is what the payout ratio is showing. They're paying their dividends out of their regular income. If they do that, if they run above that number for too long, then they got to either take on more debt or cut their dividend or eliminate their dividend. Uh, REITs are not going to do that. You know, by law, they have to pass on so much profits um, in terms of a dividend. So again, an interesting thing where it's high payout ratio, but really good current ratio. So those are some things that are, are pretty good with that. So that'd be something to consider between the two. But, you know, LTC, uh, like all the, the stocks we're looking at, has this whole, there's some upside, there's some a high dividend, there's a monthly payment, and then there's some things, you know, in a broader macro in, environment to consider, you know, as far as, you know, pressures around, you know, the assisted living type of communities that are out there. And is there good stuff because people are aging and they, there's demand for that? Or is it bad stuff because of lawsuits and pandemic and, and hiring and staffing these facilities? So there's a lot of stuff to consider. So three very interesting stocks. And it's interesting that, you know, they both have that interesting risk versus reward type aspect to it. So, you, you know, what you want to do is do your due diligence and look even deeper at these stocks if any one of them happen to interest you and find out more and learn about more before you invest, of course. All right, with that, that wraps up this video. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. If you did, hey, do consider hitting that subscribe button and checking out some of our other videos as well too, or our courses in the description below, links to free courses, comprehensive courses, all sorts of good stuff. All right, with that, maybe there's a monthly dividend income producing uh, stock in your future. If there is, I hope so. And I wish you all the very best of luck in your stock investing journey.